Hello friends, I am Vinita Gar, HOD Computer Science. In this video lesson, we will talk about classes and objects. You would be able to identify class and object, access the members of the class, learn about three visibility modes, public, private and protected, and array of objects. We are surrounded by different kind of objects. For example, if you simply look around yourself, you will find objects like table, chair, pen, car, fan, phone, etc. All these objects have certain attributes and behavior, where attributes are the characteristics of the object and behaviors are the functions which the object can perform. For example, the attributes of dog can be color, breed, hungry, etc. And its behavior can be barking, fetching, wagging tail, etc. If we take an example of a car, the attributes of car can be wheels, gears, color, brand, etc. And its behavior can be accelerating, changing gears, etc. Now let us take another example of apple. The various attributes of apple can be shape, color, etc. And its behavior can be taste, juicy, etc. Now there may be many objects of same kind. The objects of similar attributes and common behavior form a class. If you look at this slide, all these dogs, they are objects and they belong to the class dog. Similarly, all these cars, and apples, they belong to the classes car and apple respectively. So class defines what an object is to be. And this definition is given in terms of attributes and behavior, where attributes describes the object and behavior are the functions which can be performed by an object. Here class dog defines how all dogs will look like and what all actions they can perform. So we can say that class is a blueprint to create objects and an object is an instance of a class. Classes and objects are fundamental components of object-oriented programming. So let us understand how we can create objects and what objects are and how classes can be used to create objects. Class. A class in object-oriented programming is defined as a way to bind the data describing an entity and its associated functions together. It allows data to be hidden if necessary from the outside world. Now class specification has two parts, class declaration and class function definition. Now let us see what is a class declaration. The class declaration starts with the keyword class followed by the name of the class. The name of the class is also known as class specifier or tag name. Now the body of the class is enclosed within curly braces and is terminated by semicolon. Within the class, the variables and functions are declared. The variables which are declared within the class are called data members and the functions declared within the class are called member functions. Together, data members and member functions are called members of the class. Now the keywords private, protected and public are called the visibility modes or access specifiers. The private and protected keywords specify that all the data members and member functions which are declared in this section are not visible outside the class. They can only be accessed by the members of the class. However, the data members and the member functions declared in the public visibility mode can be accessed outside the class, that is, by the object of the class. The only difference between private and protected visibility mode is that protect members of the protected visibility modes can be inherited while members of the private visibility mode cannot be inherited. We will talk about inheritance later. Now let us take an example of the class student. Here we will start with the keyword class followed by the name of the class which is student here 
and this is also called tag name or class specifier. Now the data members of this class are role number and name which are kept in the private visibility mode and the member functions of this class are in data and out data which are kept in public visibility mode. In the in data we will input the details of the data members and in the function out data we will display all the data members. Now if we define the class without any visibility mode then by default it is taken as private. So if all the labels are missing then all the members of the class are considered as private. This type of class is completely hidden from the world as none of its member can be accessed outside the class. Creating objects. An object as we have already learned is an instance of a class. The syntax for creating an object is class name followed by object name and terminated by semicolon. It is very important to note that class specification provides only a template and does not allocate any memory space. The necessary memory space is allocated only when the object of the class is created. Now let us create few objects using the class student. Now we can create the object of class student in main using the statement student and stu followed by semicolon. Here stu is an object of class student and you can see the moment we create the object stu the memory space is allocated to its data members role and name. Objects can also be created when a class is defined by placing their names immediately after the closing brace. You can see here after the closing brace of class student we are giving the names of the objects as stu1, stu2 and then semicolon. The moment these objects are created memory space is allocated to the data members of stu1 and stu2. Now let us understand the relationship between class and object again. Class is a data type. Object is a variable of class data type. Class is the uh, template or it is a blueprint and object is an instance of a class. Class does not occupy any memory. However, object occupies memory. Accessing class members. Class members can be accessed by using a dot operator between the object name and the name of the data member or member function. The syntax for the same is object name dot data member semicolon or object name dot member function semicolon. Here the dot operator is called the class member access operator and please remember object can access only the public data members or member functions of a class. Let us see an example. We have already created a class student. Now let us suppose in main we are creating an object stu of class student. Now to access the member function in data the statement would be stu dot in data. Here the function in data will be invoked for the object stu. Now the next statement is stu dot role. This statement is uh, will give an error because role is a private member of the class and it cannot be accessed by the object of the class. So please again remember that objects can access only public members of the class. Member function definition. Now the member functions of a class can be declared either inside the class or outside the class. We declare the member functions or define the member functions inside the class only when the function code is small and does not contain iterative statements. The functions which are defined inside the class are considered inline by default. Now the functions which are defined outside the class need not be small and they may contain iterative statements also. And these functions are not considered inline. Let us understand it with the help of an example. So here we have defined a function inside the class. You can see the class student with private data members as role and name. And inside the class under the public section we are defining two member functions void in data in which we are giving the statements c in role and gets name to input the data members. And then another member function is void out data 
in which we are giving the statement C out role and name to output the data members of the class student. So, these member functions in data and out data will be considered in line by default. Now, defining the member function outside the class. In this case, the function prototype is declared inside the class and the operator double colon which is also known as scope resolution operator is used to associate member functions which are defined outside the class to their corresponding class. So, the syntax for the same is return type, class name, double colon, function name followed by argument list. We can take the example of class student again with private data members role and name. And you can see in the public section we have only given the function prototype void in data and void out data and after completing the class we are giving the definitions of member functions as void which is the return type of the function, student which is the name of the class, double colon which is the scope resolution operator followed by the name of the function and this is followed by the body of the function. Similarly, we are declaring the other function out data also. Nesting of member functions. When a member function of a class is called by another member function of the same class, it is called nesting of member functions. Let us take an example. Now, uh, we have to write a program to create a class travel plan. The private members of this class are data members as plan code of long type, number of travelers and number of buses of integer type, private member function new plan. This function is to assign the value to number of buses in, as per the following criteria. If the number of travelers is less than 20, number of buses is 1. If it lies between 20 and 40, the number of buses is 2 and if it is greater than equal to 40, the number of buses is 3. There are two other public member functions, get plan. This function allows the user to input the data and call the function new plan. And the second function is show plan to display the content of all the data members. So, let us write down a program to execute this class in C++. So, we will start the program by including the header files, hash include iostream.h and hash include conio.h. Then we will define a class by starting with the keyword class followed by the name of the class which is travel plan. Now, in the private section we have long plan code, int traveler number and int buses number and void new plan as this function is the private member function. In the public visibility mode we have two other functions void get plan and void show plan. Now, we are defining all these functions outside the class. So let us see their definition void travel plan which is the name of the class double colon get plan. So, in this function we will read the values for uh, plan code and traveler number using the statement c in plan code and c in traveler number and then we will call the function new plan. Now, in the new plan function we have given the if statement if traveler number less than 20 buses number is equal to 1 else if the traveler number is less than 40 buses number is equal to 2 else buses number equal to the other function is the show plan in which we are simply displaying the values of all the data members of the class. Now, in void main we are creating an object tp of class travel plan. You see the moment we create an object memory space is allocated to all the three data members plan code, traveler number and buses number. Now, the next statement is tp.getplan. So, get plan function will be invoked for the object tp. So, whatever we will input in plan code and traveler number, it will be stored in the data members of the object tp. After that, new plan will be invoked and as we have inputted the traveler number as 22, so buses number will be uh, uh, supplied the value 2. So, it will get the value 2. Now, after the execution of this function is over, the next statement is tp dot show plan. So, here the function show plan will be executed and it will display the values of all the three data members as you can see on the output screen. So, this is how it gets executed. Memory allocation for objects. Now, it is very important to note down that all the object 
has its own copy of data members and they share the same copy of member functions. This is possible because each data, each object holds different values for uh, its data members. We can see we have created three objects S, S1 and S2 of class student. All the three objects they have different copy of data members to hold their own values for data members. Now member functions are created and placed in memory only once when they are defined in the class specification. And all the objects they share the same copy of the member functions because at a time only one object can invoke a particular member function. Two objects cannot invoke the same member function simultaneously. Now we will talk about array of objects. An array of objects is stored inside the memory in the same way as a multi-dimensional array. We can use the usual array accessing methods to access individual elements and then the dot operator to access the class members. Again, very important to note that only public members of the class can be accessed by the array of objects. Now let us take an example. So again, we are using the class student with the data members, role and name and member functions, get data and show data. We are creating an array of objects. So if we look into mail, the first statement is student stu5. Here stu is an array of object of size 5. Now to input data in, the, in this object array, we will use the loop for int i is equal to 0, i less than 5, i plus plus, stu i dot get data. Now to display the values of data members of all the objects of this array, again we will use the loop for int i is equal to 0, i less than 5, i plus plus, stu i dot show data. So let us see the memory diagram of this program to, so that it becomes more clear. So you can see when we give the statement student stu5, this will create an area of objects of size 5, namely stu0, stu1, stu2, stu3 and stu4. Now all these array elements have two data members each, role and name. Now when we give these statements to i dot get data, this will get the data of the ith element of the array stu. Let us take an example. If i is 0, the statement will become stu 0 dot get data. Now when the get data function is invoked for the object stu 0, whatever values we input in role and name, they will be stored in the data members of the object stu 0 that is stu0.role and stu0.name. So in this video, you have learned about classes and object, three visibility modes, private, protected and public and array of objects. I hope the video is clear and you have understood whatever has been discussed. Thank you.